everything I'd managed to avoid for 30 years. I'd been nailed by a giant snake. I knew I had only seconds before I'd be wrapped in the python's lethal coils. The amazing thing is when I actually found the snake, there was just this little bit of pattern in the water. I thought I found a reticulated python, but it's not a very big one. I'm going to get in there and pull it out, you know? And I was pulling and pulling, and I said, like, this, this thing's actually got quite a girth on it. And eventually I got part of the snake out, and after a while I realized, this is a hell of a snake. I'd never seen a snake this big before. When I finally got him out, he took a look at me, turned around. I thought, I'm going to let him go. All I want to do is get my camera, and I want to take a photograph of this guy spread out if I can. And I thought, here he goes. He's starting to take off. I'm gonna, he's spreading out. It's exactly what I want, because I don't want to fight with this guy. You know, Off he goes. And I reached for my camera, and as I reached, he turned around and came straight back at me. I've never seen anything like him in my life. He came straight at me with his body raised with his mouth that open, and I mean his mouth is this size. It's that big, with all those teeth. And he came straight at me and took long lunges at me. Whack! Ah, okay. They're not fast striking snakes because they're heavy, they're clumsy. He'd rather be in the water. But he took his long lunges and I realized straight away, wow, I better watch out yet. That could have been the end of me. But then something completely unexpected happened. It let go of my arm and that doesn't happen. It shouldn't happen. And I didn't understand that, I didn't realize it. Until later, I saw what actually happened. Its bottom jaw was hooked on my pants. It had got the top jaw onto the wrist. Teeth hooked, it was trying to close, but it hooked the bottom jaw because they had so many teeth. I mean, they just hooked. It had hooked on my pants, and so it couldn't close the jaw. And by feeling that tension, it actually opened its mouth. It's incredible. That is incredible luck, because I would have been really in bad trouble. Wow! Oh. I had gotten extremely lucky. Twice. But I couldn't count on my luck on the third assignment. To find another giant snake. But this time, underwater. Con Once dead, the anaconda simply swallows the whole animal. Powerful muscular contractions move the caiman towards the stomach. I didn't need reminding of what I was getting myself into. I knew about the power of these snakes, and it is an incredibly dangerous snake, and they use those coils. You cannot explain it until you feel it. When a coil is around you, there's absolutely nothing you can do. Those words kept running through my mind all the while I searched for a giant anaconda. It wasn't a fear of the unknown. I knew exactly what I would be up against. And that was what I was afraid of. snake for the first time, I lost my mind. I was desperate. I felt if that snake goes now, I'm never going to see another one. These snakes are not easy to find, not in spite of their size. They're incredibly camouflaged. The animal is, it blends in perfectly, and half the time it's underwater. 
I just saw bits of snake going in the distance and I knew it was heading for deep water and I ran after the snake and I ran to the water until I couldn't run anymore I was actually up to my waist and I just lunged forward and grabbed onto the snake and just held on and by doing that the snake simply pulled me along pulled me right out of my depth and of course I tried to pull him more in and by doing that he automatically curls around you and the next thing I was out of my depth and I was drowning So I held on with life, eh? I tell you, I held on with everything, but I went under, I went under with all this weight on me, and the snake's gripping, he now grips because there's something to grip on, but continuously moving away, like, and I pull in and pull in, hold my breath, got a touch, I could just feel my toes touching ground, kick myself up again, grab some air, and just hold up, and try and work my way back. If I think about it now, I nearly drowned, I nearly got killed by that snake. Once I got my feet gripped again, I started moving back towards the side. And he was still pulling away and everything, but he got tired enough for me to actually bring him out to the land. <laughs> we both tired. And amazingly, at that time, didn't even strike at me, didn't try and bite me or do anything. It was incredible. And I was able to photograph the snake right there where I caught it. This is what makes it all worthwhile. To be able to get the perfect shot of a wild animal in its natural habitat. It's this incredibly gorgeous animal. They are incredibly gorgeous. I'm so excited, I can't believe it. It's a fabulous animal. It is unbelievably fabulous. And the skin glows and, and, and it shimmers and it's got these patterns, this model, it blends it. Everything about it is fantastic. But it's powerful. It's, it's just a miracle that I ever got that snake. I had survived the bite from that wise old snout of cobra, escaped the jaws of the giant reticulated python, and I nearly drowned in the coils of that powerful anaconda.